This is Andy Purawa for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm joined by Michael Minard over Zoom. Michael, how are you? I'm not too bad, mate. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Um, I imagine you're excited now. You're only days away from your professional debut. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling confident as ever. Like I've, um, I've, I've just approached this week with, you know, knowing that I've done everything that I possibly could have done. So I'm quite confident moving into fight week. Your first full camp as a pro, how has it been? How have you felt throughout? It's been good. I've been it's it's been sort of obviously a big adaption from uh, the amateur game. Um but I've I've took it well. I've t- I feel as if I've I feel like this this the professional game is a lot more suited to me than what the amateurs was. Talking about your amateur experience, uh, Mike, you know, reflect on it for me, your kind of your pedigree as it were. So it was a little bit, it was a bit interrupted, my amateur experience, because um, as a, when, when I was a junior and I, and I first started, I joined with the St. Aloysius in Heighton. Um, the likes of like Luke Willis, Tom Stalker were there at the time. Um, and then obviously that got closed down. And then I followed the coach, Jimmy Cornest, to Bellevale. Uh, then the Bellevale, the the it got sort of shut down for refurbishments and the boxing club wasn't a part of the refurb. So I had to move gyms again to the Gemini with John Rice. And then I joined the Navy and boxed in the Navy. And then after that, I was somewhere else. So it was a little bit all over the place. Um, obviously, if I could go back now, I'd probably try and pick a, a really sort of stable place that I could have just, you know... The, sort of sort out a, a good sort of stint in, in an amateur background, but um, it is what it is, you know. Is that, a, is that a regret of yours then, listening to you? Is it a regret maybe not having more of a, an experienced amateur background? Um, well, yeah and no, because y- yes, in the, t- in, the, in the sense that if I'd, a, if I'd a approached it the way I approach things now, I'd probably went, I'd probably would have tried and figured out where is the, the best place for me as a boxer and, and what's going to develop me, where am I going to be kind of at the bottom because you know, I said in an interview yesterday there with, with VIP that, you know, if, if you're the strongest or the smartest in, you know, in the room, then you're in the wrong room, so if I did, if I looking back now, if I was to change anything, I probably would have put myself in, in the toughest gym in the city and try to, you know, you know, carry it out from there because it don't, it would have only developed me even even more so. So, Mike, coming on to your pro debut this week, you know, for those who won't know who you are and for those who do, what should people expect from you? How would you sum up your your kind of your approach to boxing, your style and your your bring craft? Well, over the last couple of years, I've I've kind of been quite sort of brave in the ring and I've not really been too fussed about yeah, probably probably a bit daft of me to do is obviously the, the, the better of the sparring partner or the better opponent that I've had the more I've wanted to just put my chin down and keep my hands up and, and try and absorb what they've got to offer and then perform on top of that but as since I've joined the Golden Gloves with Wayne um, I, f- I feel as if I've got a lot smarter and I've just not really been too fussed about, um, you know, being brave and just do, getting the job done by any means, whether that means staying out the way, um, staying on the back foot and preserving a lot of, you know, preserving a lot of energy and, and not getting, not getting marked up. <laughs> Obviously facing Carl Dobbins. Um, what do you know about Carl? Cause it's also his uh, pro debut as well. I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know anything. All I know is, uh, I've been I've been told he's quite tall, and that's about it. I don't know anything else. I don't I don't know much about him. I, I know he's quite tall and he's making his debut, so you know the, the work's cut out. But like I said, I've, I've left no sort of stone unturned, so I'm ready to rock. Is that weird facing somebody on a pro debut who is also on their own pro debut because you can't really find the footage and the to be able to look into what they do, what they do well, what they don't do so well. Yeah, well, I think that just makes it a bit more, 
um, a bit more legit, especially for the people the people who've who sort of bought tickets. Um, you, if you get an opponent that's got you know tons of footage out there that you can potentially study, or you could potentially you know you could you just know you'll know what you're in for. Whereas we're walking into this without a clue, um, so it's probably going to be who's going to adapt. On who's gonna who's gonna adapt to the you know to the style first and and we and we'll, we'll see how it goes. This boy got coming in at light heavyweight, uh, Mike. Is this where you see your career playing out, or do you see yourself dropping down steadily? Yeah, I don't think I carry the height for a light heavyweight, and I say that I say that lightly because if you can do the job. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter what height you are. If you can, if you can use your height to an advantage, then, then so be it. But, um, if you was to look at me, stats. If you was to look at my sort of body, I've got like heavyweight cruiserweight legs, but like a light, a light middleweight body. <laughs> so, um, hopefully, moving into September, I will be dropping down to super middle and then onto middleweight. Um, but it's just about adapting. I'll never do anything drastic, and I'll never sort of, I, I'll never sort of kill myself to make any weight or nothing like that. I don't, I don't really believe in doing that. I mean, a fellow Liverpoolian who has had extraordinary success at super middleweight in Callum Smith, who was obviously the Ring Magazine champion previously, up until mm-hmm. his defeat to Sal Canelo Alvarez. He is he somebody who you look up to then if you're moving into super middleweight as well? One hundred percent. I've always said this, even throughout. Uh, there's been a couple of young guys that I've done a bit of coaching with over the years, and he, he's always been someone that I've sort of pointed out to them. Was like, look how good this guy is. Look, look at his defense. Look at how you know textbook, you know how, how textbook incorrect he is with his with his work. Uh, so yeah, he, he's definitely someone that you know that you can aspire to, and even if you could emulate. 20 30 percent of what he can do i think you're onto a you're onto a good sort of you know a good way i mean you mentioned trying to emulate 20 to 30 percent but for yourself what is your ambition within the sport what would you like to achieve as a minimum as a bare minimum british title level really um i think i think just being you know again another super middle when i was about i must have been about 14 15 when there was big fights going on in the echo arena between the likes of Tony Dodson, Tony Quigley, Paul Smith. I was watching that and I was seeing these three scout suit middleweights battling it out for the British title. And I just thought, wow, well, you know, one day I could, I want to be a part of that. I want to, you know, I, I, I fancy a little bit of that. And these are lads who are, who are the same sort of height as me at super middle. So, and that was like a great sort of time for, for boxing in Liverpool. So... Uh, just kind of final thing then coming towards this weekend. When you are in the ring, will the fans expect to see you pushing for a stoppage win? Um, yeah, they could do. Yeah, they could. After as soon as I find my rhythm, yeah, as soon as I find my rhythm, my confidence will just go through the roof. I, I feel as if yeah, I'll be able to push on then and see uh, from me waiting around a little bit more. All right, Mike, we will leave that now, looks out, and leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. It's been a pleasure to talk to you for the first time. I'm sure it will not be the last. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you very much, mate. <laughs>